you prefer. Okay, so you see that little button that you can push, Laura. You, you'll see that blue button. Just say, you know, basically got it. You know. <clears throat> Let's see. I'm also going to change me to speaker view. Okay, so I should be on. I see Jean. Hmm, interesting. Um, I don't know why I wouldn't be in my own. There's someone I should know this from using Zoom so much. Is there some place where I can pin me? Something so like, it just shows me. Laurie, do you have any quick thoughts on that? Because somehow I'm not seeing, I'm seeing Jean, which is so bad because we're on recording. You put yourself on speaker mode? I did, yeah. Okay, because I see you on speaker mode. Um, okay. Well, I hate to dink around too much on a recording. Right. So right. I'm just going to go back to gallery and we'll do it that way because a lot of it's going to be on my PowerPoint anyway. So by way of introduction, how did I come up with this idea for a presentation on social media and strengths? I've been thinking a lot about how to play to my own strengths in life in general. And then I thought, well, my life is social media largely. How do they play out in social media? I got thinking, well, I'm going to dust off the material I have on what used to be called Strengths Finder, now it's referred to as Clifton Strengths, or yeah, Clifton Strengths, and see how I could marry these two topics in a presentation for a group. I heard about strengths long before I became a social media tutor and trainer, as I said earlier, focusing on people mostly 55 and up with their LinkedIn primarily as business owners and sometimes job seekers too. So people like you, Laura, I can help. That's what I do for my, so we'll call it my day job, my life, my business. I was introduced to the idea of strengths as being more important than weaknesses and that we should play to our strengths. We should honor our strengths, whether ourselves or people who manage us. In the early 2000s, at a meeting of a Toastmasters club I belonged to, what is Toastmasters? It's an organization that helps you improve your speaking, your communication skills actually more broadly, and your leadership skills. I remember the guy saying intellection was his one of his top five skills. I thought, oh, interesting. Didn't pay it much, never mind. About a year later, I say that was, I know it was in August of 2005, I was at the Toastmasters International Convention. I have a prop for this part of the speech, and I got to hear. Marcus Buckingham himself in Toronto, mind you, Marion, speaking to probably a thousand or more people. Sadly, Clifton had passed away by then. He should have gotten the award, in my opinion. But, you know, Marcus Buckingham, he's got a certain degree of cachet in his own right. And he gave a very powerful talk about the importance of our strengths and playing to those strengths, as I've said. Plus, he was also really cute with the British accent. So I thought, I'm just going to buy his book so I can get close. I feel like a fan, you know, at a concert. I'm going to get close to Marcus Buckingham and have signed this book. Maybe it's signed me this a different book. But you know, the point, I've given a lot of these away. I was intrigued from the beginning. I've taken that assessment now four times. Some, like Elizabeth, may say, you know, you are who you are who you are, which could be for some people. I've had three strengths come up. I'll call them strengths now. I feel I can own them in the way I'll explain to you here in a minute. They come up every time, but then the other times I, they, they bury my other two strengths that come up in the assessment. I'm going to go now to my PowerPoint to help you just make sure I've got my screen up here, share a screen, get my PowerPoint up. Because I think it's gonna be easier for you to follow this material if I do it on PowerPoint. So for the longest time, I thought they were assessing strengths. Oh, but no. When I delved back into the material and had heard a recent presentation by Lisbeth, it comes to pass that really what a strength is, is your talent or your talent themes, they call them. This collection of talents are your natural way of thinking, believing, and acting, multiplied by the investment you put in to developing a skill, gathering knowledge, practicing, that is what equals your strength. And what is a strength is when you can produce positive, positive outcome consistently with near perfect performance of that. Sounds like a big, like overwhelming. But if you kind of 
say in general, I'm pretty good at this. Most of the time when I do this particular task or activity, I do very well in it. So the strength is actually the outcome, the, the, the coming together of the natural abilities, we'll call them our themes, and that investment. Now, maybe you could get some clues with your strengths by thinking if I say a word or two about something and you'll think, oh, well, wait a minute. So I'll take one of mine, which would be communication. Like, Laura, you're great in communication. So you think about it, I yearn to communicate. I'm the happiest when I'm communicating. When someone helped me learn how to communicate, whatever it might be, I moved right along. The other people were trailing and I caught on quickly. And when I'm doing that kind of communicating, I lose track of time. You know, that feeling of being in the flow. And I see these, I love this phrase because I got these from Elizabeth, glimpses of excellence, even early on. And then after I'm done with whatever that is, I just feel so good. I feel so satisfied. Like, when can I do it again? So I like these ways they help you start to think about what your natural talents could be. Now, here are my five, I'll call them strengths. Because at this point in my life, I feel that I put in enough legwork, let's call it, building on my natural abilities in these areas to, to honestly call them strengths. <clears throat> I'm going to read for you the definition of these. And by the way, I put into the chat, and Philip, I'll put it in again before we're done, a PDF that lists all 34 of the strengths. So you can, uh, very, like, you know, short, just two sentences. And then you can go and get the, if you haven't taken the assessment, you can get a book about it. Like, say, another book is um, Strengths Finder 2.0. There's many books, or you can just go online and get a link. But at any rate, what is an activator? People strong in this theme can make things happen by turning thoughts into action. They are often impatient. So think of yourself, whether that might be you in your top five or maybe not. Are you the kind of person that can light a fire under somebody else? Probably you're an activator. Positivity. People with this theme have an enthusiasm that is contagious. They are upbeat and they can get others excited about what they're going to do, what they're all going to do. You know that person, that group is sitting around very ho-hum and all of a sudden Joyce walks in and says, yep, oh, let's go folks, we can make this happen. So especially when you combine the activator with the, <laughs> with the positivity, it just can actually be a little overwhelming. Winning others over, or sometimes referred to by the acronym WOO. These people love the challenge of meeting a new person, winning them over. They derive satisfaction from breaking the ice and making connection. Okay, after church, am I talking to my best friend for the last 15 years there? No. If there's a new person, I got to start with them before they leave. You know, chat about them. Like the other day, there was a lady there also trained in, the, in our faith as a minister. I'm like, hey, can I have your card? I might need another guest speaker. Well, oh, okay, here it is. Here's my card. You know, pretty soon I'll probably find her on LinkedIn. So, you know, I just don't waste any time in terms of getting to know people. <clears throat> Communication, I've talked about a little bit. That's where people can put their thoughts into words very comfortably, very naturally, very easily. They're good conversationalists, they're good presenters. I would add on to that, that they are good writers. Although I think we can all think of you, Marsha, because I know you've written a book, you've done brilliant, brilliant presentations. And you might even say, you really, you know, my writing skills are my favorite. That's really my wheelhouse. I can speak pretty well too, but writing is really my strongest, my real forte. So even some of these can be parsed, you know, separately. And finally, connectedness. And I think this is the way it's worded, one of the more spiritually oriented type of, of themes. People strong in connectedness have faith in the links between all things. They believe there are few coincidences and that almost every event happens for a reason. Interesting, right? Pretty deep. Everything does usually happen for a reason and see the links. I have a story for that. I'm going to tell you just right after this. So I'll be thinking of this. So by the way, let's go back around the room. Of course, I can't see everybody on this. Oh, we'll wait till we're done when I can have you all back on the gallery view and I'm out of the PowerPoint. And then I want to see if people know their strengths. Okay, now here's the, really the meat of the program here. Activate. How does that work? Well, some of these examples will be about how I use my strengths in my social media tutoring. I'll try to bring myself into this too. All right, so it's 
Tuesday. <laughs> on Tuesday, I have a Tuesday tip. I always like to have a Tuesday tip unless I'm on vacation or something. And I have an idea for a Tuesday tip. Well, I'm going, I decided what I'm going to do is use this recording and then get it up on YouTube and put it out as a Tuesday tip. I'm going to make myself do that this afternoon. You know, when we are on boss, we got to, you know, sometimes get out there and just do it, Joyce. So how this plays out <clears throat> then for my clients is probably all of us have had a client who's just stuck on dead center. They say they want something, but they're just not making much progress. So where do I come in there <clears throat> with my activator? I say, okay, let's get going on your about section in LinkedIn. You know, that little bio of you, <clears throat> I'll help you. If you don't feel like you're strong in writing, start talking. I'll start writing. So essentially we co-create their about section. I send it to them or I have them send it to me and then I give them feedback. So it's really helping people move forward. And I'm thinking of Marsha as a coach, would be a great example of somebody probably does that on a regular basis. <clears throat> Positivity. My daughter, Anne, gave me a great suggestion for an example here. I'm by nature a very positive person. I grew up in a positive family. I married a positive guy. You know, So it's like I live in reason stuff. In recommendations, that's a time to be positive. Not too all rosy, like, oh, Joe Taylor, she's awesome. I've always liked her. Great publishing company. Well, hello, that's not going to help Joe much. I can say Joe really knows how to translate between the technical and the lay language. Joe knows how to put an incredible publication together or something more specific so that it, people reading that recommendation will learn about Joe and what she has to offer. Similarly, with a Google review or a Facebook page review, you don't want it to be all like glowing, glowing, but no detail, but that's what I'm thinking of. Now, winning others over, I've already kind of referred to that. Social media is made for the winning over people. They'll say, oh, those just are a bunch of like superficial people who are only want acquaintances and won't go deep with other people. Yeah, okay, that's me. I own that. I don't have a lot of close friends. I don't care to go to lunch with you every Tuesday. No, I don't want to know. There's only one person I spend almost every Saturday with over lunch. And it's my friend, Gail, whose husband died about a year and a half ago. And I, and she gets really isolated. So I say to her, Gail, we're going to lunch. And she and I look forward to going to lunch. I never went to lunch with her before and that often until her husband passed away. So there are times I make exceptions. But I'm not one to like go for a walk with somebody else. No, I take my dogs. I can talk to them. You know, but I don't want to get that in bed with anybody. The husband, okay, you know, 50 years we do it. But even that's a pretty low maintenance marriage. I don't hang out with him that much. It just works fine. So therefore, I'm saying when you get to meet people easily through like, oh, they look interesting. Like the Polka Dot Powerhouse. Maybe some of you ladies have heard about that. So I was just, it's a great women's business organization. I think it might even be international. Well, I was talking to the lady about it just today and she was telling me the name of the woman. I looked her up on LinkedIn. I thought, I'm just going to send her. Why not? I'll send her a connection invite and say, I've heard so much about you. You know, you live in Chippewa Falls, Wisconsin. That's so close to where my mom grew up in Menominee. You probably know where that is. Hey, we should, we should connect. How about that, Shannon? Okay, bold, right? Why not? So reach out. And you never know where that relationship with Chan could go if she does accept my you know, invite. So this is where communication is um, the next one. Can be a tough one if you don't have it because you think, oh, I don't know what to say in my post. Sometimes you have to hire out. Sometimes you have to talk to someone like Lori or other people who are good with words. And of course you need a budget for that. So that's all things to consider. However, when you do have strong communication skills in writing, especially for social media, then it's, so, it's such a blessing because you can just knock a post out like in no time or get your blog ready and then save that, share that on LinkedIn. So it really does help a lot. <clears throat> and then connectedness, that whole everything happens for a reason. Here's a story I want, I want to tell you about that. So I have a client out East who is a very high powered attorney and you know, if you've ever met a high powered attorney, they don't take no for an answer. They order you about, tell you what they need. So my 
High Powered Attorney is also for 20 years has run a charity called Fighting Chance that provides social worker, um, what's the word in cancer, people who have trained in cancer, um, they are also social workers and then help them deal with the emotional ramifications of that diagnosis of cancer. And when my daughter was diagnosed with cancer, I, I just know how hard it is on the person and then all the whole family. And luckily she's still alive and very grateful for that. So at any rate, he's using LinkedIn to raise money for his charity. And he, want, he wanted to know a specific piece of information re relative to the strategy he has around using LinkedIn messaging. So I thought, okay, I'm just gonna suck it up and ask this lady who I really respect and she's Sandra Long, you may know her. She's an author on LinkedIn. She's a real incredible expert. So I sent her a brief message yesterday on LinkedIn and she writes me back and she didn't write me back. Did you know on LinkedIn, you can do a, a voice message just like on text, you know, Marcia. So that was so cool. And she had two questions, well, two different clients. And she did that in a minute. I said, I'd pay for her time. She didn't ask me to pay her, but you know what she did? She came back with a second message. You know, if you wouldn't mind, I have a post that went up this morning and would you comment on it? And I'm like, oh my gosh. Okay, now I have to stop this share and just show you this post because it, it was just so powerful. Anybody here seen that most recent, um, I gotta find this, oh, I'll, I'll let you watch me mumble around here. <clears throat> okay, share my screen, going to here. Make sure I have this right. Okay, so now I'm going over to me and my activity. So if you ever wondered where you, what you said recently, and you think, where did I really say that? Did I get that done? You just go down to your own activity, keep going to find it. And uh, Top Gun, that's it. The one, the, the one that's come out recently with Tom Cruise, right? So yeah. she had watched this. And I, here it is. Okay. So this is this is the hotshot LinkedIn consultant, right? Can you see this post, hopefully? Yes. Saying it's the plane, not the plane, it's the pilot, was her favorite quote from this Top Gun Maverick movie. And then she said this quote can be translated in different ways. And she has her own interpretation of it relative to LinkedIn. How do you translate it? Or what's your favorite Top Gun quote? And then she has a link to eight quotes from Top Gun. So I look at them and I write her, thank you so much, Sandra Long, for this post. The one that jumped out to me was it's time to let go. No, I'm coming out of al -Anon. I'll just throw that out and break my anonymity for a minute because I've learned about letting go for over 30 years that way. Just today, I, organ I emailed the organizer of a business networking group telling them I don't have time to come as I originally planned. I've got too many commitments. This quote can talk about also letting go of relationships that aren't working, groups that don't serve me, and most importantly, letting go of ways and thought patterns in which I am limiting myself. I, am, I think me and God wrote that. I know God writes everything with us, but that one especially, I thought, whoa. So then I said, this gave me opportunity for self-reflection, all because of my demanding client. Okay, did you get the, we have to go back to the beginning for the connected part. And then she writes a really sweet comment, like, thank you so much or something. So I just thought that was just perfect example of how there are no coincidences because I got to reconnect with Sandra in a way with maybe thought of. And I said, you know, tag me anytime. I'm always happy to comment. So on this note, then I'm wondering, um, if we kind of throw it open to everybody or anybody just you could just raise your hand or use electronic hand and share about some of your thoughts. I actually, Elizabeth, I'd like to start with you because I want to see if there's anything else that I left out that was pretty critical. I know what I left out, the part about how the Strengths Finder got started, maybe a little tiny bit about Clifton and his research with Gallup, maybe, you know, not a lot, but would you like to, you know, fill in any of the gaps around how Strengths Finder came to be? Absolutely. Yeah, no problem. Um, yeah, so basically, StrengthsFinder came to be with a partnership with Don Clifton, um, who was a business executive and a psychologist. It's based in positive psychology, so it really looks at what are people um, naturally doing well and not focusing as much on weaknesses. Um, and in fact, his research question was, what if we were to think about what is right with people rather than fixating on what is wrong with them? And so this comes out of over five decades of research that Gallup 
incorporated um, has done within with human behavior in the workplace. So it's really focused in on like businesses, workplace coming together as teams. Um, and what does that look like? And I think what's really neat is they have found out what is also the benefit of having um, strengths in our overall lives in general. And in fact, their newest book is called Wellbeing at Work. And for those of you that were thinking about potentially um, you know, taking the assessment, they have a code in the back of the book to take the assessment that is included. And it is a great um, book. It really talks about it's done research from like 2020 and all the changes within the workplace. Mm -hmm. And so it's a great, um, it's a great book to kind of highlight what are they finding and they find five different elements of well being that's really important for like managers business owners to really know about ourselves as individuals to know about um, well being wise and be you know so also I'd like to jump in and say then it sounds like the last from the last sentence or so you said that independent business owners like we are you know accepting Laura's looking for a job really could also benefit from this book in particular might be a good one to start with because I think early on the audience was more corporate uh, management right working in a, a actual office type setting where you know not necessarily an office but an entity so it was directed toward the managers in particular so that's good to know that's really helpful to know about this new book I like and one other thing I wanted to say is by the third time I took this assessment and one of my favorite strengths, or I guess I'd still call it strengths, had dropped off connectedness. I was pissed, to be honest. So I thought, I'm going to pay money to Gallup. I think at that time it was around $50. This is 2018. I wanted to know all my 34 strengths in order and what in the heck happened to connectedness. And you wouldn't be surprised. Where was connectedness? Number yeah. six. Number six, right? And I've had a strengths a certified coach say that it's really the top 10 that are your wheelhouse. Your top five are, you know, obviously more important than the next five. But one of the advantages of paying to get all of these is you'll see your low ones too, of course, and you go, oh, that's the ones I got to farm out, right? So any any other thoughts of people that have done, um, especially if you've gone through the assessment, how you see that might apply to social media or life in general? Yeah, go ahead, Lori. I think I just did a training recently to a quick training on playing to your strengths. And I think when you're doing your own messaging for marketing, so of course, social media is a big part of that, right? You really do need to play to your strengths because my strengths, I have a lot of the same ones that you do, Joyce, like, you know, the woo and the communication. Mine are all related to like, you know, relating and communicating and all those things. So I'm always jealous of those people who have what I consider more like the hard skills and they're, they're analytical and all those kind of things, but that's just not in my top strengths. So I think if it is, I just tell people, don't pretend to be something that you're mm -hmm. not, especially when you're putting social media posts. If you're like a geeky nerd, that's very technical or whatever, own that. Okay, Laura says her, <laughs> own that and use that and have that style you know, persist in your whole marketing because then it matches your brand and you stay more on brand. And if you're totally a touchy feely people person and that's you, be you. Because I think people can sense when we do things that are not authentic to how we really are. Yeah. yeah. Go ahead, Marsha. It's it's so funny, Laura. I, I agree with you 100%. You, you and, and Joyce. And I looked at this and I'm one that I remembered two of my strengths and I'll go back and, and, and look at all of them. But it just so happens that this session just falls right into one because one of mine was connectedness. I, and I knew it. I remembered that one, but I didn't remember exactly why. And July every year is the time that I spend time just looking at, I'm sorry, that was me, that I spend time just going back and looking at my goals and what I'm planning to, what I have planned to do for the year and what I still need to do. And mm -hmm. I hadn't pulled out my Strength Finder book, but boy, will that come in handy now because so, so the belief is this session was for a reason for me to remember that I needed 
to do that as well, because it wouldn't have been included in all the other things that I was doing for my uh, self-assessment. Thank you. Oh, wow. That's awesome. So you just ask, uh, yeah, like we just can all go home now. Um, so Laura, you ask how, and I think I would turn probably more to Elizabeth on this. Are you talking about the Myers-Briggs? Is that the Kiersey temperament or? Myers-Briggs is personality. Yeah. Kiersey focused more on temperament and how you know, your temperament, your personality may be a little bit this way, but he weights the questions a little bit differently depending on how long it took you to answer the certain question and it's well gee it's never d but damn which one is it more a b or c well c is only occasionally which one is it a or b and so he puts that extra weight on how long did it take you to really decide to answer a or B or whatever. And then that really focuses you in on your temperament. Um, now I wind up being an INTJ. Uh, as he calls it, the NTs are all your Prometheans. And an Can we INTJ. Stop that's an introverted, introverted, intuitive, um, intuitive thinking, human thing, and, and judging. judging in terms of somebody who likes to have life scheduled out, makes their decisions with their head. When yeah, they gather I get all the information. Yeah, I get all the information, and I make a decision. And unless you can pre present me with newer, more, um, more correct, more appropriate information, I stick to my guns. I stick to the plan. Now nobody's a hundred percent anything, right? Um, now I peg out the thinking. I do peg out on the intuitive. The introvert, yes, I am. When I recharge, I do it alone or with just one or two people mm -hmm. that are very close. Obviously, I'm not shy. Um, right. <laughs> shy has well, I guess I, to do I'm going to just ask: Does either Marsha, Elizabeth, anybody have um, some background in, in her about the Kiersey temperament that I, I mean I don't have? So, is, can anybody else yeah. answer Laura's question? So, do you know anything about that, Elizabeth? I, I know just a little bit from oh, a, I mean, yeah. a company that I used to work with used all those those things and I would go back to what you started with earlier with the Clifton strengths is that and this is just my interpretation of it that time that investment time you know when you're taking like your natural talents times the the amount of investment you put into it to get a strength I would say that the the more personality and temperament profiles are more how you naturally are without that added piece of the oh. investment into it. Does that, See, does now that make, make sense? Because I it does make my sense. natural mastermind, because that's right. what they call my temperament, is the mastermind. Put us in a nice, quiet, dark room, tell us what all pieces we've got, mm -hmm. and we'll tell you what you need to win the war. Um, mm -hmm. It's like Amber Nimitz, um, Benjamin Franklin, Jefferson, Adams. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah. But we're not a Patton or a um, Alexander the Great. They're SPs. Damn, they lost right. half, half their equipment and they can still take what they've got and make it work. Okay. Um, but the mastermind, I took that techie nerd, very focused, you know, very, I don't want to say the word rigid, but in some ways it's very rigid mind and went into bioscience. I could have also- okay, been I think at this engineer, point, but yeah, I appreciate yeah, all this. I need to ask Elizabeth a question about this and then just move on to some other- Sure, no other problem. Questions. Okay, Elizabeth, any more thoughts on this relationship between the Kiersey and the Clifton? Yeah, and I don't know as much about the Kiersey, but as I was just quickly Googling it, um, I would say definitely it does have more of like personality preferences kind of leaning into Myers-Briggs types. And so I would say there's a lot of, there can be a lot of overlap between personality preference and your strengths. And so, you know, I could even potentially start to think maybe what some of your strengths might be based upon what you were just sharing um, with like your personality preferences and that, and even the Kiersey. So, you know, they all do interrelate to make us, um, people who we are. And this is, again, more kind of research within the uh, workforce and, and that type of thing, whereas personality preferences are kind of like who we are innately too. 
Mm -hmm. Anybody else have any, um, who here has done their, so you, Laurie knows hers, Marcia knows at least a couple. Anybody else, Bill, oh, Jane, Jane did, right. So Bill and Jane, we haven't heard from you. Jane, do you have any thoughts on what, what are your strengths again? You wanna just, tell, I know you put them in the chat, but what are they? Uh, yeah, let me tell you again, I'll look them up. Cause I just took it like an hour before this course. So <laughs> I haven't had time to absorb it all yet, but um, uh, they come up as learner, relater, uh, that's not the right order. Let's see. Yeah. It's okay. Yeah. Learner, relater, intellection, uh, connectedness, and strategic. And um, they they pretty much resonate with me. I'm not sure of the order because I think of myself as a strategic person. Bottom line, that's it. Um, I do. And, and the connectedness really resonates with me too. I might uh, start having all my clients take this drink spender. Yeah. The client so, mine. And it's, it's, it helps I, me help you. How? So I, I'm, I'm still trying to figure that's one of my challenges is um, how to present myself on social media. And as you mm -hmm. know, I'm, I'm working on my LinkedIn account and trying to start using it better. And I think, you know, this will help me get the first steps to learning how to express who I am because mm -hmm. I'm reluctant to do that. <laughs> yeah, you know, because one thought I want to go to Bill next is some people even put their strengths at the bottom of their about section, which is kind of a risk in that not everybody's going to know what in the heck they're talking about. But yeah, you, there's a thought, depending on what you do um, as far as, you know, the nature of your work. So but I just throw that out there as a thought. So Bill, what do you know your strengths offhand? Yeah, so I actually did this the first day in business school, and I didn't even know that it was called the Clifton assessment, but mine are restorative, empathy, command, ideation, and woo. And I think the one that resonates okay. most with my career is probably restorative because I work in you know video production. So it's always about taking things that you need to fix and things creatively that you need to implement and try to make that the best it can be for the project. Yeah, the de definition from that PDF I sent you all, I put it in the chat, is restorative is people strong in this theme are adept at dealing with people problems. They're good at figuring out what is wrong and resolving it. Does that resonate then with you, presumably, Bill? So it's yeah. a little different than your interpretation, but yours sounds good too. Yeah, I think where it kind of ties into social media, it's sometimes you want to make everything super perfect with like your social media and your outreach that sometimes it inhibits your progress. So sometimes these strengths can also <laughs> become weaknesses if you don't uh, handle them correctly. I forget that where it says perfect is the enemy of done. Is <laughs> something yeah. about, I'm, I'm not getting the words right, but get it done, right? Exactly. An ide ideation, I think, unfortunately, has been... Um, Tied in, oh yeah, I love that statistic from Elizabeth. Ideation, you hear of suicidal ideation, sadly. You know, so many more people choosing to die by suicide. Yet ideation, which is in roughly my top 10, at one point was in my top five bill, it says here, people with this theme with ideation are fascinated by ideas. They are able to find connections between seemingly disparate phenomena. So things that might not otherwise seem that would be connected, they're like, oh, but this, and that, and oh, I see that now. And in your field, I think that is so important. It's such a natural yeah. fit for the work you do. I guess so. Yeah, this uh, they did a lot of research into these topics. So it's pretty mm -hmm. interesting how it like ties into your actual personality. Yeah, wait, the way I use that, this particular one is in somebody's LinkedIn headline. It is, oh, along with the about section in your picture, I would say part of the th top three elements of your profile. And people don't take advantage of it often. They often just use the default of their title, their company and their company name. But as I get talking with them and applying my other strengths and using ideation, I'll go, oh, oh my gosh, I've got it. Okay, I've got it. Let's try this and this and this. So we're in the editing screen and we get them all the cool little vertical separators and it comes up and they go, oh my gosh, that is me. It says, you can pay me now. We can just wrap up, you know. It is such a cool feeling. Talk about satisfaction. When that one simple thing is changed, it just changes everything in terms of how people feel about themselves, how they show up. And it's such a gift to have that. So I have a high respect for other people with ideation. And one other thought I had before, right now we're not quite done to wrap up, but 
I, because I know now my 34 in order, starting with 2018 and now my one I did in 21, strategy, you were talking about that, Jane? Strategy is not something I've ever owned in my life. I don't really think of myself as strategic. However, I must be getting better with the investment part because I went from number 17 with strategic and 18 to the number by November 21, it was number seven. That is a big jump when you think about it from 17 to seven in my top 10 now. I believe that's because I am strategic without even naming it as such. I, I do help. And when other people are strategic, like, like, like Jane would be, that would help bring out my strategic part too. So you think that's a whole nother way of thinking about how we're applying these strengths. And I hope this has been helpful, you know, because tricky to talk about this concept. Yeah, good. If you haven't like read books or thought much about it, but I thought, oh, I really think these, this whole idea of Clifton strengths and what you learn from it is anybody can benefit from it, especially business people. So um, I think it's a good time for Lori to do our coming attractions. Would you like to tell us just a little bit about, <laughs> sorry, I feel like we're out at the movie theater. Um, I, I'm going to stop the recording because we don't need to have this on the recording. Here we go. Tell us, I'm not stopping the meeting, don't worry. <laughs>